Hi, I'm Mary Plummer, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own synth scores with that unique 80s sci-fi sound. This is a companion piece to Mark Spencer's Motion Magic video where he showed how to create these titles. All you need is Logic Pro 10.2 and higher, and a Mac. Special thanks to Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein for their brilliant soundtrack that's bringing about a resurgence of one of my favorite soundtrack genres. You can read more about the composers at these links. And in this piece you'll see I have a lot of software instrument tracks. A lot of them only have one note. And I also have an original beat that I created I'll show you how to make. Let's take a quick look at the recipe. We have an intro sound that sets the mood, some kind of cool underlying synth that drives it. We need a heavy beat or something that works with the synth. Then some mirroring sounds to enhance the beat. Sweeping, pulsing, ebbing, flowing sounds to build. And then a definitive ending. So let's go to the library. Let's type 80s in the search field and see what we come up with. Use your arrow keys to move up and down the list and test drive these different sounds. Close your eyes if you need to listen to them. You'll know it when you hear it. And if you think you like it or you might use it, keep it. You can always delete the track later. I'm going to start with this 80s synth lead. And then I'm going to duplicate my track by clicking the track duplicate button and go back in and find some more sounds. I'm going to look inside of the synthesizers in the library and just continue to duplicate tracks and add sounds until you build up a nice palette of sounds that you can work with. You can go back and test them all by just then clicking the track headers and typing a key on your keyboard using the on-screen musical typing keyboard. I think sometimes the hardest part of a project like this is just trying to narrow it down to a few sounds to work with. But I think we've got one. Let's lower the tempo from 120 beats per minute to 90 and listen. Okay, that's better. I can feel the titles moving a little slower and I think that'll work a little bit better. Okay, I think it's time to record the first track. First I gotta figure out what note I wanna play. And I think that's my winner. I'll go with A sharp, but I'm going to lower the octave. And just pressing U or clicking on that key will work. Make sure I'm at the track. Make sure the track I want is selected. I'm going to hit the record button. And I'm going to press and hold the one key. And that's it. You literally just hold it and let the synthesizer do the work. When I'm finished recording, I'll just release the key and press the space bar to stop. And there it is. Now, my next track is going to be exactly the same, so instead of recreating it and re-recording that entire note, I'm just going to option drag a copy down to the other track. Just hold down option, drag it down from the header, and then release the option key before you release the mouse, and there it is. Okay, those work really well together, but I want to stagger them so let's go ahead and drag my plucked cycles over a little bit by about a second. So now we have our intro sound and then our primary synth is going to step in and take over. So let's create a new track. I'm just double clicking the empty space to create another default track. And I'm going to pick an orchestral percussion orchestral kit. And what I'm looking for is a sound I could create a beat from. So I'm going to pick around on a few of these, change the octave till I find just the right sound. That'll work, but instead of performing it, I'm going to turn on my arpeggiator. So let's move the keyboard up. I'm going to bring up our smart controls. B is the shortcut. And in the top right corner smart controls, there's my arpeggiator. And that is the default sound. Not digging it. Let's find something else. There we go, my complex chord groove number one sounds perfect. I'm going to raise the velocity, so I'm striking it with full force as I press the key. And let's record. And let's go over to our channel strip in your inspector. If it's not showing, press I. I'm going to add an effect in the effect slot for the guitar plugins. I'm going to use a guitar pedal board plugin. I'm going to use an echo. Make sure you turn on sync so that it matches the project tempo and other effects. Notice what happens when I add the repeats. That's fairly fun. 
Let's also add a little happy fuzz to our project. Not too much, just enough to distort it a little bit. I don't want it too clean. Let's grunge it just a bit and we could crank that volume up a little also. And if you want to turn on and off your stomp box pedals, all you do is click the same button you would stomp on if it were an actual hardware pedal. All right, you know, while I'm here, let's go ahead and record that little repeats trick I did just in case I decide to use it later. So I'm going to turn on the latch mode so that I can actually record any adjustments that I make as automation. I'm going to start recording and I'm going to crank up those repeats right there in my pedal board. Just crank them right up. There we go. So I can record that effect. Now that we're finished, I'm going to move that recording over with the automation. And let's bounce this track to turn it into an audio file instead of a MIDI file. So I'm going to go to File, Bounce, Track in Place. I'll rename it My Stranger 80s Beat. And go ahead and just bounce that right back into the project. And it's going to appear underneath the other track. There it is, and you see I have a nice waveform I can look at, which will be helpful. I'm actually going to double click into the file editor and change the gain of the file, raise it by about 5 decibels just to give it a little extra kick. And then I'm going to select about 15 seconds and split the track, Command T, and move over the part I don't need. Last, I'm going to add a vocal effect or voice effect. So select the track, go into the voice presets. There's a nice warm vocal, here's my vintage, and I'll try the tube vocal as well. All right, I think I'll go with the warm vocal for this one. Perfect. That's a good preset to start. I can always tweak it. Now let's work on the timing. I'm going to drag all the tracks together and we're going to work on timing them so they're one second apart. I change the LCD to time code so it's easier to work with. I'm zooming in using the command and the arrow keys, by the way. Let's trim the head and move that first note so it starts at the very beginning. This next one will start right at one second. And just remember that the playhead has to strike the head of a MIDI note in order to play it. So make sure you don't cut the head off of that as you're trimming. And for the beat, I want to trim off the beginning of it and I want to start with the last note in the four beat series. And that way it kind of kicks off the pattern and then I'll line that note up. Let me zoom in a little bit. So it starts right at two seconds. And next we're going to look at some automation. I'm going to click the automation button and all I'm going to do is add some keyframes to my volume curve. I'm just going to dip down the sound because a little bit goes a long way. You can drag across those and select them. I'm going to add some to the other as well. And this way these will start strong and then they will slowly fade out or drop out and then we'll bring them back in. Next I'm going to record two very simple parts. A string section that basically follows the beat. And then I'm going to add a choir piece. It's also just the same four notes and like one extra for harmony. Let's option double click that choir piece into the editor. Look at the condensed view that shows only the notes played. And I'm going to make a chord by option dragging one of the notes up to create a stacked chord. Get the right note. There we go. That works. Close it up and now I have my chord. You can even see it right there in the region. Next we're going to use the alchemy synth to add some of those awesome 80s synth sounds. Now how do you know which sounds are alchemy? Well you can see it right there in the channel strip for the selected track. Just click Alchemy and there it is, the world's most powerful synth. There's a list of all your sounds to work with and here are the controls. Now we're going to close it up for now and just work with our smart controls. I'm going to show you how to use, change the snapshot to alter the sound and you can even do it while you're recording. So I'll practice a little bit and then I'll actually record it and move and change the snapshot of my effect right there. Notice that it actually kept it. Let's do it for another sound. So we got one and there's another one. I'm going to find just the right sound and then I'm going to record it with changes in it. As you can see, this is the recorded note. You can watch it changing and that's all done automatically. Then I can work on adjusting my levels. Perfect. 
and let's add some effects now what we need is our definitive ending so I'm going to look at some of the trailer effects sounds that come with Logic Pro all well, those are just too much fun this is like adding the sprinkles to the cake at the end <laughs> so I'll add some of those effects Okay, that sure sounds like a definitive ending to me. Last, I'm going to go back into my automation and raise or lower any of the levels I want to so that they're not too dominant in the mix. And finally, let's go to the track menu, show our output track, select it so we can change that mix and hit X to bring up your mixer. There you can see all of your automation at work. And if you hit X and hide that again, you can do that. And I'm going to look at some of the mastering effects that I can apply to my project just by selecting the output track and then choosing some of the presets that add some EQ and compression automatically. Now I normally dial these all in myself, but for this demo it's handy to show you some pre-builds. That's psychedelic, big rock. You get the idea of how much it can color the sound of your overall mix by just using some of these mastering tools. Let's take a look with the movie. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you'd like to learn more about Logic Pro, please go to rippletraining.com and check it out. I'm Mary Plummer, and thanks for watching.